I want to express my sincerest sympathy through the MPs of the four constituencies affected by the present tidal waves to pass through you and send my sympathies to those who have been affected. Anyway. Two months ago, I was here, and there had been a disaster because of the same tidal waves in the K2 South constituency. And so we mobilized what little we could, and we joined the MP, when we joined the chiefs and uh, other people affected, and we made a presentation to them to alleviate the suffering that they were going through. Then just last week, we had news again that another tidal flood, tidal waves had affected even more communities and more villages than the earlier one. I'm familiar with the area because when the sea was eating away the coastline, that is after we finished the Keta Sea Defense, I visited the area and saw the effect of what the ravaging sea was causing to the people. And so we asked Amandi, that was a, a, a construction company, to do an extension of the sea defense from Keta to Akleotoko uh, area. And that is what ease the suffering of the people a bit. The intention was to continue it all the way to Anyanui and to the estuary of the Volta River. Unfortunately, we did not remain in office to see it completed. And that is where the current disaster has had its most devastating impact. Several villages that I visited during the period I was in office today have been washed away completely. The villages don't exist anymore. And so the communities such as Bobobokope, Kokobokope, it's gone completely. Kokobokope is no longer there. Part of Hubeme is also gone. And so we cannot sit and not respond to the plight that the people are going through. And so even though we're not in government, there's a saying that the fly, if even it doesn't have anything, it knows how to rub its hands. And so after rubbing our hands, we were able to put together a few items. I want to thank those who responded to our appeal. There are several business people who do not want to be named, but who came together and supported us to make this presentation. And so today we have here a thousand bags of rice. Oh, oh, okay. We have 3,000 foam mattresses. <laughs> we have 2,000 pieces of canned fish, which, oh. which we call mackerel or tinapa. That's what our people call it. We have 2,000 pieces of canned tomatoes. And we have 2,000 liters of cooking oil. This is our widow's mite, and I'm here today to present these items to the members of parliament, and they will in turn present them to the people affected. What we're going through is part of the processes of climate change. So 
but these are some of the things that uh, Mahama brought to Keta today. As you can see, it's a lot. It's a lot. He brought about uh, 3,000 mattresses. Understand about uh, 2,000 bags of rice, 2,000 bags of uh, uh, cartons of tin tomatoes, and uh, 2,000 uh, packs of uh, sardines and other things. I'll try to get you the details um, in the comment section or in in uh, the post description. So, um, sadly, uh, this is not me doing politics, but then. This is about me talking about the fact that uh, the NDC isn't the, the political party in power. It is the MPP that is in power, right? But uh, uh, not more for the people of Hanglo and Ketu South. Not more couldn't break anything. But then a political party, a political party that the people are not paying tax to, was able to bring all these items. Almost uh, 4,000 people were affected. Initially, the number was 3,000. It means every single person is going to, every uh, at least one person in a household is going to get a mattress to sleep on and food to eat. So you can you can uh, just imagine. This is how much uh, the NDC brought uh, to Keta, Mahama to be specific. So um, the ruling government should actually be ashamed because if a political party can do this how come the government that we are paying tax to cannot do the same for us it is really sad we need to be thinking about some of these things seriously